many people would like to know, does orthodontics affect the shape of the face? We all know that crooked teeth can be straightened by various devices, usually the train tracks, which are fitted to so many children's faces. But orthodontists don't talk about the face that much, although they do say that orthodontic treatment will improve your appearance. But is that really accurate? What does happen to the face? Um, I've done quite a bit of research into this particular subject and I, I did one series of identical twins. They have the great advantage that you can see not only what happens when you treat the face, but what would happen if you didn't treat the face or if you treated the face in a different way. You have two models and clearly the identical twins you'd expect to grow up looking fairly similar, but there's no doubt that some forms of treatment can alter the shape of the face substantially. I mentioned I'd done a lot of research, and back in 1999, a long time ago, I um, presented a paper showing that quite a high proportion of um, faces that are treated by orthodontics actually look worse after the treatment. Um, it's a worrying concept, this, and I announced it in a, uh, in a television present presentation that I thought about 30% um, of faces are slightly damaged and about 20% of faces are quite markedly damaged. Um, although in my personal experience, I'm not sure the numbers couldn't be greater than that. Um, it's difficult quite to understand what one means by a beautiful face or a good-looking face. But essentially, a girl like this one here, she is only, I think, nine, ten years old, but she has an attractive face. Anyone can see that. And most people would say, well, she'll probably go on and be an attractive woman. Now, she... Her upper teeth stuck out a little bit, not much, about seven millimeters. And so uh, her father, who was actually a medical doctor, took her to see an orthodontist. Um, now, at that time, the only real way for orthodontics to correct an overjet, as it's called, like this, is to pull the top teeth back. But, of course, that normally means you have to take a tooth out on each side so that you can pull the teeth back. But this doctor was particularly keen on trying to avoid taking any teeth out. So he asked the orthodontist not to extract any. The orthodontist wasn't sure this was a wise thing to do, but he agreed. And he did this by um, an appliance fitted round the back of the neck to pull the whole of the upper jaw back. Um, and this girl was very good. She wore this for, um, I think, three years, just about. Um, but very little changed. After the first two years, um, the orthodontist said, well, no, I'm afraid we're going to have to take um, some teeth out. So the doctor reluctantly agreed to this. The orthodontist then pulled um, uh, the teeth back, but still there, there was an overjet still of about five millimeters, I think it was. Um, and eventually the uh, orthodontist said to the doctor, I'm afraid we're going to have to do this by surgery. We're, we'll cut your daughter's lower jaw and move it forward. And of course this upset the doctor, not surprisingly. So he, he came and saw me. Now uh, by then she of course was approaching I think 14 years old um, and I then took this picture which you can see what actually happened. Now would you have forecast that to happen? I think not.
I have no doubt that that was caused by the force of pulling her upper jaw back. Now, when you pull an upper jaw back, it also moves down the mere relationship of it with the other bones of the face ensures that. So it pulls it back and also goes down. Now, the lower jaw, of course, is worked on a hinge here, like that. And what actually then happened was that the lower jaw was sort of jacked down and back. Because as it goes down, being it rotates here, it goes back at the same time. So that is why uh, as she grew up, her face was not only longer, but also her chin was further back. Now, that doesn't need to happen. And in fact, I spend a lot of my time treating children to achieve the exact reverse of that, where the face is down and back, and I want to move it forward. And we can then get a result, something like this here. Um, and that you can see, we've done almost exactly the reverse. We've taken a face which is going down and back. We've converted it to one which is going up and forward. Now, sadly, this is not a message that orthodontists want to know, and I think um, they have been very faulty in warning and telling patients that the damage to the face is a risk. After I made this original announcement in 1999, I was subsequently condemned by orthodontists for saying it and thrown out of the orthodontic society. More recently, I've been complaining um, quite volubly that orthodontists should tell patients this, um, but aren't. And the General Dental Council um, felt I shouldn't be saying that, and they have now removed my license, saying I can't do any dentistry or orthodontics at all. Well, that must be for you to decide whether it is right. But it doesn't change my real concern that some faces are undoubtedly damaged, and this uh, damage can be really quite severe. You know, I would recommend that anyone asks for really sound advice on this issue. I hope that's been of help to you.